All right, here we go. Oh, look who it is, everybody. It's, it's, it's the listeners. It's the listeners, and they got some questions for you. Mm. Okay, Father's Day gripe. Hey there, Billy Pasteface. More like Billy Pastry Face. I would like to vent about the vast inequities I experienced between Mother's Day for my wife and Father's Day for me. Oh, I knew this would get people going. On Mother's Day, my wife sleeps in, mine does too, and eventually wakes up to me handing her a cup of freshly brewed coffee in bed. When she eventually gets up and walks out of our bedroom, she'll notice fresh, fl- fresh flowers in her vase, breakfast prepared, and a greeting card on the kitchen counter. Dude, you're crushing it. I cook for her, her mother, and her sister later that day. Point is, I work my ass off throughout that day to make these women feel special. Now, my Father's Day experience. She slept in. I made my own coffee. I fed myself. Nobody planned any party or get together for us dads in the family. No card, no present. Dads liked to fire up the grills, so I cooked for my family that evening, and we watched the Hawks beat the choking Sixers. I like cooking, so it's no big deal, but I just find it funny that we have to shower women with attention and acknowledgement, but, not, but that is not returned to us on our special day. I'm good to my wife and kids, so every day is Father's Day. The way I experience life. Uh, the whole holiday thing is bullshit anyways. Look at that. He just, in the end, he's just like, it's all bullshit anyway. Yeah, dude, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know that that, that will ever happen. I was going to say, like, you know, at some point they'll maybe realize. The only way they, they, like, realize that shit is if you do what I did between Mother's Day and Father's Day. You got to keep hammering them that your day is going to be just as special as their day so they don't forget, you know? Because if you don't, it's going to be, it's going to be a eight to noon thing and then that's going to be over. Dude, my father's day, there was a, there was a fucking uh, event. There was a birthday party for one of her girlfriends that was planned on father's day. <laughs> so we had to go to that. That was my father's day. I'm not saying it was a bad event. I love those people. I love a girlfriend. They're all fucking great people. But it's like, I just don't see a world where like, you know, if I planned a birthday party for like, you know, one of my buddies and it landed on Mother's Day, it's like that's that is being rescheduled without a fucking doubt. Without a doubt, it's being rescheduled. Um, I mean, it's still a great party and everything. I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that's just kind of it's kind of how it is. Um, and we always do, uh, generally speaking, a great thing for them on Mother's Day, but I don't feel that it's necessarily done 100% out of love. It's also done out of self-preservation and fear because you know that if they don't feel special, then you know, you're going to have to deal with the emotional ramifications of that for anywhere from three days to um, they, they might never get over it. Um, and it's be something that they bring up in arguments forever. So, yeah, uh, preaching to the choir. Uh, but just know this. At the end of the day, you're a man. So you won. Okay? You're not as complex as, as them. So you can actually enjoy life. And you can kind of sustain a certain level of happiness. And a certain level of satisfaction. You know? Because you're too dumb to know that you should, you should be upset. <laughs> this is a genius to our stupidity. They're too smart to be happy. Um, that's my theory. Anyway, I don't know. They're just theories. Anyway, okay. F1. All right. All right. Billy runs with fire in his pants. I don't know what that means. I have a simple message. Watch F1, you cunt. I know you enjoy motorsports and get really excited whenever you mention F1, but you haven't talked about the recent F1 races, which, spoilers, have been incredible. France happened this weekend, and that was an incredibly satisfying race. Baku happened two weeks ago, and that was probably one of the best races of this decade, an instant classic. Fuck, I missed. I I can go back and watch them on their website. Get this. Due to new regulations, Red Bull is leading the Constructors' Championship, and Max Verstappen is leading the Drivers' Championship with Lewis Hamilton close behind. This is the season we've been waiting for. Yes, it is. 
Shut the fuck up about hockey and watch this shit for ten dollars a month. Well, the thing about hockey is every season is the fucking season you're waiting for. It's hockey. It's fucking great. Um, maybe F1 should run their fucking business a little more like the NHL does. Um, anyways, for ten dollars a month on F1 TV Pro, this is not an ad. I tried to get into MotoGP, but that subscription is $40 a month. Not worth it, but F1 is. No, 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 no. I draw the line there. I draw the fucking line there. Dude, all of that shit that you're talking about, the best race, I watched that race, and I guarantee you there was three races last year. Dude, the Mark Marco, Mark, uh, Marquez versus uh, Andres Davizioso battles. There was like, there's been like three or four of those races where they passed each other three to four times on the final fucking lap. And, and that happened like two or three times a fucking season. Okay? So I don't want to hear like, oh my God, we finally had a fucking exciting fucking race and now this is better than MotoGP. If you want to see passing in racing, which to me is people jockeying for position, passing, you know, the whole fucking thing, then, then I would say MotoGP is where it's at. It's still where it's at. And unlike you, I watch both of them. I don't watch one race. Oh, fuck that. It's too much fucking money. Yeah, you, 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 you pay your little $10 for the, the inferior fucking racing sport. I'll stick with MotoGP. Anyway, the next two weeks have races in Austria. Tune your fat head in and watch Mercedes struggle. I mean, I might as well because, you know, at some point they're just going to throw money at the fucking problem somehow. And uh, they'll be right back, you know, where they usually are. Look at this guy. This guy's so beaten down as a fan of F1 that he's excited that in June, Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton aren't in first place. Um, I don't know. Hey, by the way, is it me or does Sebastian Vettel lose his fucking whatever the front or airfoil is every other race? He lost one of his front wings. He's got damage. He has to go into the pits. Oh, it's a disaster. All right. What, what I should have said. Oh, here we go. Number one. Hey, Billy Casper tits. I'm loving the, I'm loving the body shame here, people. I'm doing it to myself. I need this. Uh, I have a story from childhood that has stayed with me to this day, and I wish I had said something. I was about 12 years old and was with my older brother and his friends who were both in high school. We all went to the movies to see something. I don't remember what the move. I don't remember what movie because my memory is blinded by rage, the rage of something that happened at the theater. I got an icy frozen drink and some candy before the movie. During the movie, I finished the drink at one point and put the empty cup under my chair until the end of the movie. My brother and his friends were sitting to my right, and a family was to my left. At the end of the movie, I stood up with my group and began to shuffle out of the theater. I felt someone poke me in the back. It wasn't the kind of poke like, excuse me, it was pretty hard. And I knew right away it was someone being aggressive. It felt more like, hey, motherfucker, kind of poke in my shoulder. I turned around and saw it was the father of the family who was sitting next to me. He was holding the empty cup I had accidentally left under my chair. Oh, what a cunt. This guy looked like if Roger Goodell was an Impotent used car salesman. He had cargo shorts, white New Balances, accountant glasses, stupid colored golf po- polo shirt, and a clinging, oh, clinging to scraps comb over. Oh, dude, if, he, if, if a man has a comb over, you've already won the exchange. He shoved the cup into my chest and said, here, your mom isn't here to pick up after you. I was a pretty polite kid, and I always tried to be respectful and clean up after myself. I had just forgotten about the cup. Simple mistake, right? I was so surprised and slightly humiliated that a stranger would do that, especially to a kid. I just took the cup and walked off. But to this day, I really wish I had said something like, you know what? I'm going to let you hold on to that, you fucking Janet Reno-looking cheese dick. (laughs) It would have been satisfying to throw the cup right back into his face, too. But alas, I did nothing. I hope he has ass cancer at the end. Um, well, listen, there's a lot of vic- victory in this. The guy has a comb over. He's such a small person that he does that to another. He does that to a kid. That, that's not a happy guy. He was taking out um, 
the dissatisfaction he has in his own life on you. And that's what a lot of people who do shit like that are doing. Um, but, oh, I mean, I bet to this day you still feel that poke in the back like it just fucking happened. If you're anything like me. All right, number two. Hey, Billy Rednuts. A few years ago, I was at 7-Eleven. There was a homeless guy sitting outside. It was the middle of the winter and freezing cold. So I went inside, got myself a cup of coffee and a cup of coffee for the homeless guy. I went out and handed it to him. I walked away feeling good about myself for doing the right thing. Just then, the homeless guy yelled at me, What? No sugar? I was stunned and kept walking. I wish I said, Go fuck yourself, you miserable cunt. Ah, yeah, I've had that happen to me. Remember, there was this guy just out of his mind on something. And he was sitting near, I was doing a spot at Stand Up New York, and I put some change into his cup. And I walked about five paces, and I just heard the, the sound of change being thrown down the sidewalk. And he just goes, fuck you! <laughs> I think he yelled, fuck you, as he threw the change back at me. But I was, he was also, you know, fucking out of his mind on whatever he was on, so... It happens. Yeah, what, no sugar? Yeah, what, no job? Only people inside get sugar. Become a productive member of society, then you get a little treat in your coffee. All of that shit comes to you. But at the end of the day, dude, it's a homeless person. Could be somebody with mental issues because they've shut down all the nut houses and they have a hot cup of coffee in their hand. You don't want to stir them up. You wait till you get in your car and then roll down the passenger window as you drive by. Yell some shit, but you're driving so fast because you're a coward. All he hears is, <laughs> that's, how it's, that's how it's done. All right. Oh, God. This person used a word. I don't even know how to say it. Pronunciation. Here we go. B-A-N-A-L. Hello, ban- Banal Bill. B-A-N-A-L. Ah, uh, Jesus Christ. B A N A L. Pronun- pronunciation. There we go. Let's all learn something, shall we? Come on. Banal. 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 The fuck does it mean? That doesn't sound like something good. Lacking originality, freshness, or novelty. Trite. <laughs> All right. Hello, Banal Bill. This is, that's, you know what? This is the most educated way I've ever been called a hack. I don't disagree. All right. The past year was my first year of college. So during the pandemic, my school had very strict rules about how many people you can have in your room. One night, me and my two roommates decided to play some beer pong. About five minutes into playing, a campus officer walks into our room without knocking. Whoa. This asshole cop walked in like he was about to make a drug bust. Instantly, he starts to opening drawers and cabinets. Then he says, open the, up the fridge, buddy. I responded with, do you have the right to search my fridge? The cop says, are you a first year law student or something? I still lay awake thinking about things I could have responded with. No, I'm not. But you're definitely not. You fucking rent a, You're not even a real cop. I should have said something. Are you a first year rent a cop or something? That's even better. Thanks for the laugh, Bills. Hey, dude, the next time somebody just comes walking in like that, you have every right to say, get, you go, you can't say fuck though, because then they'll get you on that. Get back outside and knock, or I'm going to report you. You can't just walk in. Well, actually find out if they can or not. It's not too late to file a complaint. It's kind of a bitchy thing to do, but, but who knows? I mean, what if that was like, uh, you know, would he do that with women? I don't know. That guy sounds like a fucking character in a comedy. And the whole crowd's rooting for you to try and get him back somehow. All right. Um, all right. What do we got here? I got to get on with the fucking day here. Oh, I almost, almost dropped the laptop there. What I, shouldn't, what I shouldn't have said. Oh, here we go. We got a new one. This is that. What you were just listening to is what I should have said. If you have a situation where somebody said something to you and you didn't fucking think of anything to say until like a fucking month later, those are the what I should have said. I unplugged my fucking headphones here. But if you actually gave in to your urge and then you said it and dealt with the ramifications, that becomes a what I shouldn't have said. All right. 
Dear Billy Boston Burns, I've enjoyed uh, the what I should have said recently, and I thought I'd throw out a story of something that maybe I shouldn't have said. Uh, This was around 15 years ago. I was in my early 20s, and my girlfriend had gotten VIP concert tickets to see Christina Aguilera. Uh, um, Every note. I'm going to show you every note on the scale, every other line. Uh, The kind, you are beautiful. The kind where you get to go backstage and meet them. All that bullshit. Holy shit. At the time, I was a major Bob Dylan fan. He just does one note. Still... Still am, but I was a bit of an asshole about it back then. Total music snob. Oh, all right. And they should do a duet. Bob Dylan and Christina Aguilera. You know, just two different minimalist style versus over the top. As I was mad, and I was mad that I had to go watch Christina Aguilera when literally any one of my girlfriend's mates would have generally enjoyed it. Yeah, but I'm fucking around with it. But she can actually sing. She doesn't have bad songs. They're pop songs, but for what they are, they're good, right? Um, but no, drag the reluctant boyfriend along. That's female logic, right? Well, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what they do. What? I thought you'd enjoy it. It's like, do I bring you to a football game? Uh, so we're backstage after the show and standing in a long line of people when, uh, people that Christina is walking along, shaking hands and posing for photos with her nose turned up and pulling this face Like, she shouldn't have to breathe the same air as these people. She gets to my girlfriend, shakes her hand, and takes a photo. Christina, "Ah," then holds her hand out to me, and quick as a flash, I wave it off and tell her, that's okay, I'm not a fan. Oh, my God, dude, you said that? To be fair, Christina, to Christina, she couldn't give a fuck and moved on, but her bodyguard behind her was dying to laugh and gave me a little nod as he passed dude i don't know this sounds like all victory here the story i thought all right your girlfriend has to have a bad reaction to this the story always gets a laugh with my mates but the older i get the more i think maybe i should have just been polite i was at her show after all so why be a dick That was me in my 20s thinking I knew better than the rest of the world, the know-it-all young Englishman. Such is life. Well, you know what? You also fucking, you know that about yourself. It happens. Guess what, buddy? You are beautiful no matter what they say. Um, That's all right. Everybody says douchey things sometimes. Everybody's a cunt sometimes. I actually felt bad for her, man, because that's such a... The way she was blowing through the line, though, that's one of those things where, listen, if you want to vacuum up the extra money with the VIP meet and greets, you got to fucking either do it or don't. Uh, Because the worst thing you do is charge them the extra money for the VIP and then blow through the line, and then they actually feel like like they got mugged. Uh, What needed to be said? Hey, Billy Pasty Legs. Um, I always listen to your show and recently you've been asking people to write in with their stories about things they should have said in the moment, but they didn't. Well, I have a story for, uh, for you about something actually saying someone actually saying what they wanted in the moment. And it was brilliant. So this is called what needed to be said in high school. My friend and I all had the same geography class. I don't know why these stories are so satisfying both ways because I have empathy for the people that didn't say what they wanted to say and have to carry it. And then I got this like, all right, for somebody. (laughs) Super duper. For the people who said um, what they wanted to say. Um, I still love that kid from the class. Well, who the fuck asked you? (laughs) It's that hot chick. Our teacher was a holier than thou feminist, the type that puts down men with every chance they get while building up women in the class at all times. Oh, yeah, right in front of the guys. I I took one of those classes about 30 years ago. When a guy would ask any question in that class, she would treat him like an absolute moron. But when a girl asked out loud, is lava like really hot? This is a grade 12 course. The teacher responded with, what a great question. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's how it works. It's very easy to go from being oppressed to being the oppressor. Uh, Getting to the point, one day she's going 
on an absolute tirade. Who knows what happened to set her off like this on this particular day? She goes on and on about how men are absolute creatures that the world doesn't need anymore because women can reproduce without them now because of sperm banks. Well, you'd still need us to jerk off into a cup. And that more women graduate high school and more women go to college than men and more women are starting to work in higher paid jobs than men. And she finishes this rant with, what do, what do me even have anymore? Oh, you fucking idiot. You didn't write it correctly. What do me even have anymore? Or what do men even have anymore? You forgot the end. Without missing a beat, the quietest guy in the back of the room goes, sports. All the guys in the class started laughing so hard. She kicked most of us out of the classroom, but me and my friends still bring that story up to this day when we're together. One of the funniest moments in high school was a moment when someone actually said what they should, they should have in that moment. Yeah, and she acted like an absolute child about it. Yeah, I mean, that is a thing. That's why I make fun of feminists. I don't make fun of somebody for being a feminist, but just those loud ones. That's kind of how they. Uh, that's how. The, that's how they play the game. It's like uh, people were sexist to me, and the solution is for me to be the sexist. I still this 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 latest one where they canceled somebody was so fucking ridiculous. It was like the person that got canceled was obviously in the wrong and did something wrong, but the person that he did it to. They're not the ones that canceled him. It was a bunch of bitter comics that didn't get into a comedy festival and took that moment to fucking try to, to take this fucking guy out because not because they give a shit about black people. It's because they hate that guy because he didn't put him into a, a, a fucking a fucking comedy festival. Which in, in my ways, it's like, doesn't that make you just as bad as he is? It'd be one thing if you actually gave a shit and at some point actually addressed what the guy did and how that makes pe- black people feel. Nobody did. All they did was talk about what they did, what he did to them. And then I went to audition to the festival and he said this to me. And that's that's what you really cared about. It's just fucking, it's so fucking stupid. The whole thing, this is such a stupid, crazy fucking time. And um, I'm not in the wrong, because you know what's funny? I, I got to tell you something. I went to this uh, this birthday party, all right? I went to this birthday party uh, with my wife, and it was at a gay bar, and there was a drag show, okay? And I went in there. And like five or six different people came up to me and I, oh, I really love your comedy. Got a picture, blah, 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 blah. Great time and everything. So as he walked out, my wife goes like, wow, man, the gay crowd in there, you know, they, that, was really, uh, that was really cool. They really liked you, right? And I said, yeah, do me a favor. Remember that. Remember that the next time these fucking idiots try to do that cancel thing. Just remember that that is reality. And that that other shit is just people just jockeying for this fucking narrative or whatever. Because if I was what a lot of people were saying to me, I am, if I went in that bar, I would have been hearing it from everybody. And instead, it was the exact opposite. And I had a great fucking time and so did everybody else. But that's not what counts. That's what's not, that's not what it counts. It's not what counts. What counts with fucking, I don't know. What, whatever, I would love to know what the percentage of people are in these cancel culture things. Why the fuck isn't this goddamn plug working so I can upload this fucking... Po- oh, I know why, because I'm still recording. Fucking stupid here. Um, yeah, there's reality, and then the reality that cancel culture is trying to present as they abuse their power, much like that woman that was teaching feminism who is so hardcore feminist that she literally becomes a sexist and thinks the solution is to then do to men what was done to women. And then the reality is, is like, so the only reason why you're not a chauvinistic pig is because you were born a woman. You're actually what you're fighting. That classic cliched thing. So that's it. That's my little fuck. I'm off the stump now. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Wednesday.